What is going on everybody? My name's Tony and welcome to my madness. In today's video, I'm going to take you through my first experience growing mushrooms from start to finish. First off, you're going to need a pair of gloves, some 70% isopropyl alcohol. I just put it in this little spray bottle for convenience. Then you're going to need an inoculation jar with rye grain berry. And then your inoculation syringe with the needle, some scissors, and some packing tape. So let's start by clearing everything off and sanitizing our station. Once I've got my area completely sanitized, I want to make sure that I sanitize my hands thoroughly to avoid any contamination whatsoever. Then we're also going to make sure we sanitize our jar thoroughly. Along with our syringe. The needle we don't need to worry about sanitizing because it comes pre-sterile in the package. You're going to want to take off the cap and then get the inoculation jar and you're going to find the self-healing inoculation port and you're going to stick your needle right through there once you've got the needle all the way through you can then add in your inoculant and for this I chose to use about two cc's of a liquid culture if you want to find out where I found this liquid culture, go check out my Instagram page and I will leave that link in the bottom. Once I've inoculated my jar, I'm going to take it and shake it up just a little bit to spread the liquid culture around in there just a little bit. Once I've got my jar all shaken up, I'm going to take a piece of clear packing tape and put it over the top of the injection port just to make sure there is no air getting in through there or any contaminants. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a label to it, keep track of the date and the strain. Here you can see we're 10 days after and we do have some mycelium growth, just a little bit on the outside. A few days later and we have much more growth. On the 26th you can see the mycelium looks super thick. And then on the 1st it was super healthy, very thick, which leads us to here the day that we put it into our mono tub well today we are going to spawn to bulk super excited look how thick and healthy this mycelium is inside this jar to start the next step of the process we're gonna go ahead and start by sanitizing our mono tub so we're gonna spray it inside and out and wipe everything clean Don't forget to sanitize your hands and any surfaces or utensils or items that you may be touching during this process. You want to stay as sanitary as possible. Once we've got our tub all sanitized, we are going to use a trash bag for our liner. So I'm going to drop that down inside the tub, make sure it's all spread out evenly. I'm going to go ahead and take the lid off my jar, give it a smell test. It smells super earthy, make sure there's no funk to it super pretty down inside there so I'm going to grab this butter knife here and I'm going to as carefully as possible try to get all of this mycelium and rye grain out of this jar and by easy I use that term loosely this was super thick inside this jar Once 
Once I got everything out of the jar, I stuck my hands in there to further break everything up very gently by hand. This was much easier than trying to get it out of the jar, let me tell you. At this point, I think I'm just playing in it because the texture of it just feels so unique. Once I've made sure I've got everything broken up into individual grains, I'm going to go ahead and add in my substrate. And for my substrate, I did my own mixture, which is cocoa coir, um, pet bedding, wood chips, and I used some worm castings. This mixture is just something that I came up with on my own, just from watching videos and reading different articles. Um, there's really no real solid evidence that this mixture will work. This is just something that I'm going to try out. So for this, I've added about three and a half handfuls for the one jar. Um, so about, I'd say roughly a three to one ratio. And now we're going to take and we're going to jumble this mixture around inside the trash bag. Make sure it gets all evenly mixed throughout. You can see here it's super evenly mixed. Um, individual grains are all spread throughout. So after we're done mixing everything up, we're going to take and we're going to gather the corners of the trash bag to lay it on its side. Once I got the trash bag laid out on its side, I'm going to go ahead and even all of the substrate out and try to get it as flat as I can, spread evenly throughout. And then I'm going to take a very, very bad pair of scissors and attempt to cut all the excess trash bag off to create our liner for the bottom of the tote. After I got all the excess cut off, I went through and I made sure everything was even as possible and flattened everything out. After that's all done, I'm going to go ahead and give this tub a really good mist down the sides. I'm also going to make sure that I miss the top of the lid very well just to trap in all the humidity and moisture that I can possibly contain. Then I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on snugly, make sure it snaps into place. And then I'm going to take painter's tape and cover up all of my vent holes. We want to make sure that we are trapping in as much moisture and humidity as we can for the first few weeks until the mycelium fully takes a hold of the substrate. Can't forget to throw a label and a date on there and this tote is all finished for now. We're going to make sure we stick this somewhere dark and cool. And we'll see what happens over the next few weeks. Here you see on the 6th a little bit of mycelium growth in spots all around. The 7th it's much more prominent. Quite a bit of progress in one day I think. 
on the 8th it's looking really good here you see on the 11th it's almost completely covered except for just a few spots here and there on March 12th the mycelium was looking super good so I went ahead and switched over to fruiting conditions and with that what I did was take the painters tape off and switch over to a micro pour tape and you can see through these few pictures that the growth from there on has just gone wild and that brings us to today finally harvest day I'm super stoked for this although there is a little bit of bad news we have contamination my wife spotted this while I was on my way home so it is time to get these out of here and we're just gonna go ahead and get right in and we're gonna pull and twist as much as we can I did try however to use the tool you could see it there just a second ago um, but for these these were so thick and clustered together that I just couldn't find a good angle to get the tool down in there so I just went ahead and twisted and pulled as much as I could to salvage anything and left everything behind that I thought was too small or underdeveloped or maybe too close to any contamination that we had saw um, and though it was very faint it was there and I didn't want to wait any longer to cause any issues with the mushrooms themselves. This little cluster right here was particularly stubborn. I tried my best to get it apart without tearing too much of the cluster up. This little one though, this one was the one I was looking forward to the most. This one is huge. So there you have it, my first harvest from my first flush, my first attempt trying to grow mushrooms. I'd say we did pretty all right, if, if I don't say so myself. So yeah, here we go, and we're gonna put them on our dehydrator at 113 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the lowest setting for this dehydrator that I had, and we're gonna put it on for 12 hours and let it go see what happens 12 hours later and we ended up with 23.9 grams of dry weight super stoked um, can't believe I got all that out of my first flush um, if you like this video give me a thumbs up any tips or suggestions let me know in the comments and until next time stay mindful